This is one of the noisiest venues in college football. And finally we are underway. And it'll go out of the end zone, come out on the 20 yard line. Quarterback Chad Henney. And uh, so, Bob, what do we expect from Chad and this Michigan offense? Well, Brent, Michigan's played it close to the vest. They've let that great defense win for them. But if you look back to the Notre Dame game on the road, the Penn State game on the road, hostile environment, they came out and opened it up because of Chad Henney. He can handle the pressure of this situation, Kirk. Yeah, I think it's very important for this Michigan offense to take some chances on first and ten and give Henney a chance on play action. Preston goes through the formation. Mike Hart, who was not healthy a year ago, on a slant behind the left oh. side. Needs seven, and there is Preston. They like to use him in the slot. They'll bring him across the formation. Can he changing up in the teeth of all this noise? The three step drop slant got it. To the 47 yard line, Mario Manningham, his first reception and his longest gain since returning from injury. Everyone worried about Mario Manningham's knee. I think he's healthy. And Chad Henney checked to that quick slant against that Ohio State defense. His own defense, a nice vacancy, and Chad Henney in rhythm where he is most dangerous through a C right into the chest to Mario Manningham. 24 yards, and they go right at number 14. The walk on Antonio Smith, who's now on scholarship. Deeper drop, Henney. Henney keeps it in the air and keeps it in the arms of number 86. He comes back to Manningham. And now our city offense and I want you to focus on number 77 Jake Long. He was playing right tackle last year in Ann Arbor. First play of the game a year ago. He drove into linebacker Bobby Carpenter. Carpenter suffered a broken leg and did not return for the rest of the season for the Buckeyes. Jake Long is a first round draft choice waiting to happen. He is the left tackle for the Wolverines. Second now and three. They're going to keep it airborne. They think they can do business against this secondary. Another first and 10 at the 35 yard line. And the Wolverines showing their hand here early. That was Carson Butler, the tight end. And now our city Buckeye defense. All three levels are good. Quinn Pitcock, outstanding defensive tackle. James Laurinaitis, finalist for the Butkus. Malcolm Jenkins, notice they did not throw in the direction of number two on that quick slant to Manningham. They know exactly where they're going against this defense. Jenkins goes over to the right side on the corner now. First down and ten. Four plays, three passes. Michigan clearly trying to take the crowd out of the game. Mike DeBoer, an aggressive game plan so far. Olibo is the fullback. He'll lead the way. Slash with zone block. Here's Hart. Hard to bring down with a first man trying to reach for the first down. There's to be just a little bit short of it. Antonio Smith making the stop. Michigan wants to run the football 65% of the time this year. They've run the football, and this guy gets the carries when they hand it off. Mike Hart, great upper body strength. And, and one of the things that helps Mike Hart be able to get through there is the passing to slow down those safeties and slow down those linebackers. And that is hard running there. Had determined running back. That picture was the Ohio State Michigan rivalry. Running backs gaining hard yards into the teeth of a tough defense. Henny again, slant, got it, reaching for the end zone. Tut! No, wait a minute now. They're going to call it down just shy of the end zone, reaching forward 25 yards on that play. I'm sure replay will take another look at this as to where he was going down with his knee. Mario Manningham coming up big again. And Chad Henney right now, coach, is in, is in sync with his motion and being very comfortable. And when he sees Antonio Pittman one on one with Mario Manningham, that's where he's checking and that's where he's going. Well, you had Antonio Smith to the outside and he hit the vertical seam. Nice throw. They come back with the running back. Michigan strikes first. Somewhere, someplace, Bo Schimbeckler is smiling. Mario Manningham's return triggers it. Chad Henney, just as it has been all season with the Wolverines, on target. He goes 4 of 4 for 67 yards on the opening drive. And the aggressive play, Colin, much like 
when Michigan played at Notre Dame sure. earlier, much like when they played at Penn State. And in those two games, they averaged 15 yards of completion on first down. So you knew they'd come back to that again in this game. Garrett Revis tacks on the extra point. Ted Ginn hoping to get his hands on this kickoff. They deploy two wingmen at the 15 yard line, the Buckeyes do. Revis going to take it. And they're going to try to seal him up on the right side. Again, looking for a seam. Breaks free. Tackled at the 31-yard line. Let's go back to the big catch by Manningham. Here's exactly what Chad and he saw. He saw the free safety in the middle. So he knows he has one-on-one -on -one coverage with the corner, Antonio Smith, on Mario Manningham. It ends up being zone coverage. And, and watch Antonio Smith's body. He gives, Anto he gives Mario Manningham the inside, which is a big mistake and a very easy throw for Chad Henney. When Chad Henney throws in rhythm, he's a very accurate quarterback. Trestle opens with Troy Smith in the shotgun. And they will throw it. They'll put it in the hands of Ginn trying to come right back. And that is Hall, the outstanding corner. They decide to throw the first pass, and here is Troy Smith and what do we expect from the Buckeye game plan here today Kirk? Well I think you're going to see Ohio State try to spread the athletic Michigan defense out with multiple wide receivers and give Troy Smith an option at the line of scrimmage to either go to the run with Antonio Pittman or try to find some one on one matchups on the outside depending on how Michigan's defense tries to come after the Ohio State offense. Here's your second and eight. Rolling to the right. A strike to Ginn for the first down. So twice they put it in the hands of number seven, and it results in a first down for the Buckeyes. Now first down at 10, ball at the 44. Pulling back, looking downfield, got great time. Here's Ginn breaking free, incomplete. Had they hooked up, it would have been six. Pressure that time from Lamar Woodley. Number 56, and I'm sure that the coaches upstairs noticed it. And we know the key to Michigan is being able to block the front, give him enough time. They get excellent pressure from Woodley, really forced the incompletion as you see Ted Ginn beat Leon Hall down the field. He beat Leon Hall, and more importantly, he got behind the safety, Jamar Adams. That's something that Ohio State feels they have an opportunity to do if Troy Smith has time, but you're only going to get that many opportunities so often in a game like this. Second and ten. And again, Smith firing back underneath to Brian Hartline, his first catch of the game to the 50 yard line. Picked up about six, and Chris Graham making the stop. So, our city Buckeye offense, and let's focus on the left tackle because you know they're going to have to match up. Alex Boone did not start. Tim Schaefer, the senior, started, but Alex Boone, after missing a game, he is healthy. He's been a little bit gimpy on a knee. We expect to see him a lot. He's only a sophomore. He's the left tackle. The tackles and the guards will have their hands full on this Ohio State offensive line. Better defend quarterback draw every time with Troy Smith back there. On third down, he'll throw for another first and ten to the 41 yard line and reaching out is Brian Robisky against this Wolverine defense. We've already talked to you about Lamar Woodley. David Harris, perhaps an underrated middle linebacker, a senior. And Leon Hall, the Buckeyes have not backed away from him. So far, the Buckeyes, five plays, all passes. One of the reasons they like to go to their four wide receiver look is to try to see if Michigan's defense will try to take away the speed of Teddy Ginn and then work to the inside to Hartline and Anthony Gonzalez. From the 45 yard line. Smith's in trouble, and there's the first sack of the game. And Rondell Biggs, number 91, is credited with it. Rondell's a senior from Southfield, Michigan. And we have an injured Wolverine down. That's Willis Berenger, one of the four safeties we expected to see today. And Brent, we talk about Tim Schaefer, the tackle right here, starting for Alex Boone. And right here, Rondell Biggs. They actually kept the tight end and tackle both in. That is a great effort by the end opposite Lamar Woodley. An illustration of his power and going right through the tight end. Top of the hour in the East and we see that Willis Berenger being helped off to the sideline.
So 4 p.m. Eastern time. Sun starting to set here in Columbus. Lights will be on before this one ends. Troy Smith in the face of pressure again, dropping off the screen pass this time. And the very aggressive defense. There is David Harris coming up to make the play. And Woodley obviously exchanging some words with number 10. But the Wolverine front bringing pressure. The whole key to this game, can they protect? Again, you see a screen pass. They're going to give penetration. Not quite that much <laughs> penetration. Well, Woodley is one of the best pure pass rushers in college football. Played at 274 last year, down to 250 this year. His acceleration, he went right by Schaefer. Third and 16. Here comes the blitz. Engelman trying to get there. Oh. Caught. First down inside the 25. Roy Hall under enormous pressure. Number 10 shows you why he's the leading candidate for this year's Heisman Trophy. First of all, really, I think a good job of protection right here. Michigan comes with the safety blitz, allows Troy Smith enough time, and right here, a great throw to Roy Hall. They beat Johnny Sears, number 25, who hasn't had a lot of playing time this year at corner. Kirk. And that was a great shot of the arm strength from Troy Smith. But if Michigan's going to bring pressure and be in one-on-one -on -one opportunities, if they don't get to Troy Smith, he's got the accuracy to burn him. Let me correct myself. That wasn't England when it was 21 Monday on the blitz. And here comes now Pittman. And he crashes across the 20 yard line. And Prescott Burgess, number six, makes the stop. So that completion by Troy Smith on third and 16 for 27 yards. And you see the key already in this football game, Kirk. Can Ohio State protect Michigan? 40 sacks on the season, 24 by the defensive line. It's going to all come down to protect them. And Jim Trestle, Jim Trestle's well aware of that. That's why you've seen so many different formations. He's trying to show a lot of window dressing to try to slow down the Michigan defensive front. Second and five, and from the gun, lead to. Ted Ginn incomplete. It was a forward pass, and that will bring up third and five. Another third down here. Saw that formation. You talk about formations. They call that the shot Ginn when <laughs> Teddy Ginn is in that slot right there. Such a cat and mouse game early in big games like this with so much hype. The coaches who have the, the perspective that we have looking down and seeing where the adjustments need to be made after the first two offenses have been on the field. Five receivers. Smith underneath again. Roy Hall's second catch and he's inside the 10. It'll be first and goal Buckeyes. And Kirk, you talk about the coaches' flexible game plans. It all comes down to the quarterbacks, both teams with quarterbacks that can do it all. Michigan that time only rushing three, and Big Roy Hall at about 230 pounds making the catch for the first down. Interesting play call there because they had so many receivers in. Michigan's defense so aware in the middle of the field that they, they sat back down the middle of the field, and it opened up a nice vacancy underneath. Play fake. Slant, another completion to the two yard line. Putting it in the arms of the fullback, they slip him out. They told us they were going to include this in the game plan, and Stan White Jr., a good receiver, watch him come out of the backfield. He's the fullback. There's 89. And I'll tell you what, I remember when they talked about trestle ball, field position, great defense, kick field goals. I mean, he's throwing it every down now. Yeah, and I, and I think that. In the history of uh, Jim Trestle being the head coach at Ohio State in the five years in this rivalry, that's been his M.O., that he has been aggressive with his play calling and shows some plays that he hasn't shown all year. The power luck on second and goal. Pittman straight He's ahead out. will not get there, and now it is third and goal, and this is a tough call coming up here for Trestle. 
Bob Davy mentioned the one play that he always has over there in his bag of tricks, the quarterback draw with Troy Smith. And so difficult to defend right here on third down at the two yard line. They could run option. They may go power. It looks like they're in four wide receivers right now on the two yard line, Kirk. Yeah, I wouldn't be shocked to see them spread this great Michigan defense out and give Troy an option to run or throw because of his versatility. Ohio State better hurry. We're going to call timeout right here. Troy Smith trots over to the sideline. His final game in Columbus played magnificently last year in Ann Arbor and previous year against Michigan here in Columbus. We can remind you now this is just the beginning. One of the great games of the year. Cal of course looking ahead last week when they went up against Arizona. And Mike Stoops was able to pull off an upset, but Cal still playing for the right to get to Pasadena in a trip to the Rose Bowl. So it's Saturday night football. And you know, one thing about this game, we look at both coaches wide open. There's good pressure and there's bad pressure. To me, good pressure as we look at Lloyd Carr, you come in here 11 and 0. If you win, you go to the national championship game. If you lose, the worst, you can go to the Rose Bowl. Bad pressure, you come in here about 6 and 5, and if you lose, you're fired. So it's a little bit easier I think for both coaches to play a little looser and to let it rip. I mean when that job's on the line oh. it's tough oh. to throw it every down. Oh, sure. <laughs> sure. This is the fourth third down of this drive. Empty set. <laughs> Throws for a wide open touchdown and it's Rory Hall. That's his third catch of this drive. The Buckeyes convert third and four, third and 16, third and five, and now third and goal. Football is a game about preparation. How many times do you think Lloyd Carr and Ron English looked at Jim Tressel's offense and practiced against a five wide receiver look from the two yard line? Those are the little wrinkles that Jim Tressel tries to save in this big game because it means so much. Michigan's defense confused from that look. Just like that, Ohio State ties it up. Seven all, six minutes remaining in the first quarter. Let's go back and look at the touchdown. Some people may say this is a legal pick. But as I said in the open, you're not going to get that call in the big game. Those Big Ten officials are going to keep that flag in their pocket. If you're an offensive, and let them play. if you're an offensive player, that's a rub route. If you're a defensive player, that's a pick. Coming out on the 20, and somewhere Brian Robisky's father is smiling. That was a big-time NFL move. Temperature in the high 40s here. No rain or snow in the forecast. Wolverines with the ball for the second time, and they're going to put it right back up, and the receiver fell. They were coming right back and there is the first slip on the new turf but there was big pressure from David Patterson. It's the first time that Ohio State has applied pressure on Chad Henney but he still had enough time and it's been interesting to see Mario Manningham stay on his feet. If he stays on his feet that's another completion for Henney. And I think we're going to see a lot of slippages as the day goes on. The, set, the field resodded three weeks ago hasn't had a chance to seal and there's a lot of open seams on that field. Second and ten with the power look for the Wolverines. Here's Hart, stretch blocking, trying to get the angle, pushed out of bounds. About the 24 yard line, picking up four, and that'll leave him third and six. That was Malcolm Jenkins, the corner there. And I know Bob Davy just tackled me because he likes to see corners who have ability to cover who want to come up and get physical. You just hit me. You like that, don't you? I wouldn't quite call what I did to you a hit, but <laughs> you're exactly right. That was a great You're, you're right a there. defensive guy. All defense. I love myself. I love to see corners in this day and age. Everybody idolizes Deion Sanders. How about a corner that can cover that also likes to come up and hit you? I agree with you. Here's Michigan's first third down play. Third down and six. Had time. Through hard for the first down. Bruston, his first reception of the game, working against the nickel man Donald Washington, who slides to the outside in the nickel package frequently. 
And I tell you, not much conversation, if any, about Chad Henney all week. All the attention to Troy Smith. And, Kirk, this is just a great throw right there to Breston. Not to mention going after a, a player who hadn't been on the field a lot in this game. He goes right to the right to the freshman, Donald Washington, like to match up with Steve Breston against him and puts the ball right where it needs to be. And a movement by the right guard, Alex Mitchell. Ball start. 73 offense. Five yard penalty. Still first down. Well, there's a young man who almost came to Michigan and decided that the wealth of baseball was just too great to pass up. Derek Jeter of the New York Yankees. But since he passed up an opportunity to come here, he has always been among the most loyal of <laughs> Michigan Wolverine backers. And he's among the many athletic stars who are here today. This game generating such a buzz across the country for weeks first down and 15. He has great time he's got a man wide open incomplete. He had the big fella wide open that time and they could not hook up Mario Manningham was headed for six and Kirk Mario Manningham is the best double move wide receiver in the country right there is what I mean about double move you thought he was wide open against Notre Dame he was even more wide open right there and he, he's saying oh my gosh I had it in the double move it's because of the way he accelerates in and out of his cuts and I think Malcolm Jenkins not only gets beat but was confused and looking around for a safety to help him out on second down and 15 protection holds and they are moving Carson Butler off the line of scrimmage the tight end who has come on so strong here for the Wolverines he's just a sophomore from Detroit they're flexing him off the line and that's a couple of times that Henny has hooked up with 85 and you don't think the other receiver gets a lot of attention watch Golston right there a defensive end at 265 pounds go take Manningham out that's what Jim Haycock the defensive coordinator from Ohio State says <laughs> we can't stop him once he gets off the line we're gonna have to put a defensive end on him to try to slow him down <laughs> They slot Manningham to the left for Henny on this third and five. Remember, he hit Breston on the last third down. He's got time. Now it comes free. He has to throw that one away. Past the line of scrimmage and out of bounds. The linesman right there on the throw as Henny alertly fires it. He has to get it past the line of scrimmage and out of bounds. The Buckeyes were lobbying and now they will send Gonzalez and Ginn back deep on this punt. So here come the field position twins for Ohio State. And now Lloyd Carr must show his hand. He doesn't like to punt away from people because he said you can loose it up too easily. There's a penalty however thrown by that linesman. They're going to put it in Ginn's hands. And he is down at the 20 yard line. Remember, we have a flag back at the 35 yard line. Turner Booth was the young man who got down there on Ginn. And that is against Ohio State. This is referee. Defense number six. That five yard penalty would not result in the first down. The penalties decline. Ball turns over. First down. Good decision by Lloyd Carr. We have Tom Quinn. How many times have you seen Tom Quinn out there for the Ohio State Michigan game? One of the best of all time in the, from the Big Ten. I'll tell you, Michigan really dodged a bullet because you're going to get a face mask right there. I mean, a blatant Not face only, mask. That's, that's a 15 yard face mask. They were very fortunate that the referee did not see it. Stevie Brown, number 30, the safety on the punt cover. So Stan White, who scored the touchdown, and at that fullback spot, Jake Ballard, the freshman tied in, moves over to the right side. And Antonio Pittman, second and eight. Gonzalez in motion, and the Wolverines are chasing him. They throw the slant to Ginn, and he is down just short of the 30 yard line. And the first down marker is at the 30. I believe Morgan Trent the corner who made the tackle and I think a developing story will be this field again we mentioned it was resodded I mean right there Lamar Woodley just slipping coming out of his stance Kirk 
I'm not so sure that Mario Manningham wasn't slowed down when he broke free on that pass and that the quarterbacks aren't going to have to adjust a little bit. Ginn has been overthrown. Manningham has been overthrown. This track is slower than you would normally expect here. Remember the turf has just been down now for three weeks. When we were down there yesterday. It is long. And what hurts you as a quarterback is you lose some of your anticipation if you have to wait work on the adjustment. Here's your first down play. Franker screen and here comes again. First down again stepping out of bounds at the 41 and so number seven has been a preferred target as we check in with Bonnie. Brent, I talked to a bunch of the Ohio State players before the game regarding the field. Now they said it was in pretty good condition, but I got to tell you, when guys were taking cuts and warm-ups, a bunch of chunks were coming out as you approach the sideline. The problem with this field this season has been there's been so much rain, a lot of rain in October, which is why they had to resod it. And then this week, it rained a bunch on Tuesday and Wednesday. They had the tarp down. Ohio State never even set field uh, set foot on this field until today. First down and ten, and one thing. Bonnie, both teams are playing, so they're both going to have to deal with it. And here's Pittman for a couple of yards, and it'll be second down and long. Troy Smith so far 11 of 13 for only 83 yards, and he's out to a great start. But it's interesting. I think that Ohio State and Jim Tressel probably going to go back to the deep ball just because a lot of their throws have been underneath would not be surprised coming up soon to see them try to attack the Michigan secondary especially those safeties down the middle of the field. Continue to come out with a four and five wide receiver looks spreading the Michigan defense out. There's a shotgun. He is off to Smith's right. Looking downfield incomplete. Again, couldn't hang on. In my mind, I don't think there is a more improved quarterback in all of college football, Kirk, than Troy Smith. It's unbelievable how far he has developed as a quarterback. And I think also off the field yeah. as well. I mean, Jim Tressel, well documented. He had some second chances, but he has taken the, made the most of those opportunities. I asked him, what's the biggest difference preparing for Michigan as a senior from your sophomore year? And before I could get the question out, he said, the love for my teammates. That shows you how much he's mature. Third and nine. Wolverine show blitz. Here they come. Throws it up for grabs. They'll have to punt. So the blitz supplies the pressure on number 10, Troy Smith. And the Wolverine defense makes the adjustments Kirk spoke about. And they force a punt. Anytime you go empty, you have one, two, three, four, five guys. Michigan brings one, two, three, four, five, six. So you better get rid of it quick. Ron Ingles decides yeah. to just come well, up for it. One of the ways to, if they're going to go to the five wide receivers, one of the ways to defeat that, as you said, just outnumber them and get to them before they burn you in man coverage. Exactly. Preston is back deep. AJ Tripasso, good punter. They send him over to his left, and he makes the fair catch at the 14 yard line, and he was giving ground a little bit. First down and 10. Henny back there in the noisy part, completely closed in. Not particularly nimble, and he'll go down at the 11 yard line. Lawrence Wilson, and he's a young defensive lineman, sophomore from Akron, Ohio, 6'6, 270. Lawrence Wilson provides Jim Haycock depth. There is a he rotates about eight or nine different different defensive linemen and that's where you hope as a as a defensive coordinator to wear down an offensive line because of that depth here. Now it is first down for Henny and the Wolverines were tied at seven as we start the second quarter. Snap throw on the flanker screen and putting the ball back in Manningham's hands John Kerr the linebacker the defender. Another way to get the ball into the hands of Mar to Mario Manningham but I what I love to see is that Carson Butler comes all the way over into motion and as a tight end shows some pretty good athletic ability coming out there to get in front of Manningham and almost made a good enough block to turn him loose. Familiar sight Lloyd Carr in the right ear of an official. A lot of different ways to work those officials now. You can do it with a smile. You can do it with a smirk. Here's Mike Hart no daylight. 
First man didn't get him down, but second, third, and fourth were all over him. James Laurinaitis. Fairly quiet in the first quarter, but not on this play. Well, Laurinaitis gets in there along with John Kerr. John Kerr, they're giving him a chance today. There he is right there making the initial contact. Laurinaitis coming over. John Kerr has not been playing a lot, but because this game's expected to be more physical, he's out there. Laurinaitis, there's, there's his, his dad. There's his father Ooh. watching from the stands, wearing the Suns, <laughs> number 33. You, of course, many of you know this story. Professional wrestler known as the animal, one of the stars. Fourth down. Got the twin receivers back, so different looks on the punt return team. Mesco's left footer is fielded by Gonzalez at the 42. Good field position for Troy Smith and the Buckeyes coming up here. First down and 10 now for Troy Smith. Keeping it for the first time, faking the end around and taking a heavy blow by David Harris, who makes the quarterback pay the price. Troy Smith, this is, even though he has the ability to run, he has shown that he'd rather throw the ball this year. The fake reverse to, to Ted Ginn, he gets into the open field, and David Harris, the leading tackler for the Wolverines, puts it on him. And I'll tell you what, the most underappreciated player, I think, maybe in college football, Brent, this kid has lost 10 pounds from last year. He's as good as any linebacker in the country, David Harris. Second and four. And a spinning move, breaking free, headed for the end zone. Chris Wells. 52 yards. The young man known as Beanie, the freshman and the most heavily recruited running back in the country, Chris Wells ignites a fire. Chris Wells has had a history of fumbling this year as a true freshman, and Jim Tressel is elected to stick with the freshman, going back to him despite losing the four fumbles, and it, pay it paid off here early in this game. I'll tell you what, you talk about risk versus reward. You see the reward right there when you <laughs> give the ball to Feeney Wells. That's why you keep going back to him. Exactly right. His longest run of the year, and it comes against Michigan. Aaron Petrie taps on the extra point. So Chris Wells, his seventh rushing touchdown of the season, showing you where he's from. Well, Sean Crable from the outside, boom, right there. Would love to have a chance back at this play because he could have had Beanie Wells tackled for a loss, but he's able to get through that initial contact, and then it was just a big hole that opened up through the middle of that Michigan defense. And how about the speed, Coach, that he showed in the open field for a big man? And that's what surprises me at 235 pounds. Had 99 yards last week against Northwestern. And the best thing, he didn't fumble. And that's why he had an opportunity there to carry the football. Yeah, he fumbled two weeks ago against Illinois. And it was almost a sigh of, oh, no, what will Jim Tressel do the next week? And he elected to try to give him the ball, as you said, Coach, against Northwestern. I think to mentally prepare him for this game and this Michigan defense number one in the country in rush defense they only give up 29 yards a game now the deep return man for Michigan Steve Preston the Wolverines trailing for the first time in this showdown For the first time the stadium here has come alive. On the ground, keeping it away from Bruston. Picked up by the short man on the 17-yard line. So Olivo fielded that and brings it up. And we get an update from Matt Weiner in New York.
And Matt, the Irish will be pulling for USC tonight because they meet them in the Los Angeles Coliseum a week from tonight. And they want to get a shot uh, once beaten the USC team. Here is Hart, and now fired up by Wells touchdown, the Buckeye defense. Here comes a linebacker blitz. Can't find anybody in trouble. Going to go down. And he threw that one away. There's the penalty. Lamagne is on it. Intentionally grounding Antonio Smith. Talking about the importance of adjustments for the both of these staffs and Jim Haycock right now has had the upper hand bringing pressure Lauren Ides to middle linebacker Antonio Smith who's number two on this team in tackles eventually getting there but you're starting to sense that the Ohio State defensive front is starting to win the battle in the trenches and how about Antonio Smith a rock on corner who becomes the nickel they ask him to do a lot and he does a lot for the Buckeyes 18 yard loss on the sack makes it third and 27. The Buckeyes will be looking for number 86. Time uses the middle to get a few of them back to the 25 yard line and in terms of field position a little shoving breaks out after the tackle but quickly officials jump in. Believe it or not, even though this is a nasty rivalry on the field, you talk to former players that play in this game, and they'll tell you it's one of the cleanest games that they've ever played in in their careers because of the respect that these two teams have. But Michigan, I think a little frustrated there with not having a chance to pick up the first down. Zoltan Mesko, a big leg, but not particularly quick in getting it off. Let's see what the Buckeyes do. There is a penalty flag. Fair catch is called at the 30 yard line. But there is a penalty flag back at the 30 yard line. They're going to call roughing the center on this play. I believe Tyler Booth, the center from Michigan. On the defense, number 38. A direct blow to the center following the snap. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. And they're going to call that every time Austin Spittler, number 38, lined up right over the center. And he is going to get into Tyler Booth. Watches the ball snap right there. And people at home may look at that and they say why but again it's another rule for safety the center is so vulnerable Kirk and the timing could not have been any better for this Michigan team that's they needed to catch a break with the game starting to tilt towards the Ohio State side that was huge a huge yeah. break for Chad Henney and Lloyd Carr it came on fourth and 13 all down at the Wolverine Ford. Four rushmen for the Buckeyes. Expecting Hart and the linebackers were right there to meet him at the line of scrimmage. One more look at this coach. And the key on this you have to allow the center to get his head up and protect himself. He never got his head up that time and that's why it was called. So it's not so much about the force of contact. No. It's about the timing. Exactly. Is what you're saying. Exactly. And even though it wasn't the most vicious of rules or of hits, they are going to call that and protect that center. Let's see what Michigan can do with extra set of downs. Manningham goes out to the right. Antonio Smith locked up. They shade a double team, and Bruston comes in that direction. Looks to set the screen, coming back the other way. Hart eludes the first tackler, but this will be third and long. One of the ways that Michigan likes to slow down a team that starts to be able to get pressure on their quarterback like any team you eventually go to the screen and Michigan's one of the better screen teams 
than we've seen this year because of the timing of the quarterback with the line and Michael Hart so comfortable but there is a lot of scarlet jerseys swarming to him there and the problem right now for Michigan they came in number one in the Big Ten in rush offense I don't feel like they can run the ball a lick right now no they're going to have to throw they have to throw to eventually get back to the run they're going to bump on Manningham at the top you can see the corner on third down Henny looks in that direction can't find daylight has to come back to Preston underneath short of the first down Marcus Freeman he delivers the hit but it was clear that Chad Henney wanted number 86 and upstairs Luke Fickle had signaled down to go ahead and bump on him and Haycock related to the defense that time Kirk while you play this game the last game of the year there are some <laughs> licks in this football game I don't think these two teams could play next week now it is fourth and very short. The three protectors for Michigan. Mesco is back. Gannon Gonzalez the return in. This is fourth and very short. They will punt. They'll be content to play field position. Fair catch is signaled by Ginn at about the eight yard line. So with 7.55 to go in the second quarter. Smith 11 of 15 for 83 yards in this game. Stayed back in the shotgun. Here's Pittman back on the field. We check in with Lisa on an injury in the Michigan side. Lisa. Well, Brent, number 19, Willis Berenger, he is now standing on the sidelines with his teammates. But for about 20 minutes after he got injured in the first quarter, he was over on the training bench. They were working on his right knee. He had ice on the knee. As I walked by him, I said, uh, Are you okay? And he just shook his head, No. It is doubtful that he will return. Brent. And that's a blow because remember when Chris Wells exploded. He went right in the middle of the field, 52 yard touchdown. And Ryan Mundy, the senior, number 21, back there in the backfield now. Wolverine show blitz. They're coming, and Smith eludes it. And on a comeback route, receiver was left standing, Robisky into the middle of the field. What a play by first Smith, avoiding the pressure, and then Robisky. Working against the corner. 39 yards. And there's an old saying sometimes it's not the X and O's, it's the Jimmy's and the Joe's. <laughs> and right here, Troy Smith explains what I mean about that, Kirk. Well, this is a great job of not only Troy Smith buying time to get outside of the pocket, but what you can't see here is Brian Rabisky adjusting, coming back to the ball, the near receiver. Anytime your quarterback breaks at the outside, you've got to come back to the ball and a scramble draw to help him. Rabisky for a young receiver, great instincts there. And Leon Hall missed a tackle. And Pittman now, daylight, 10 yards on the left side. There were a couple of things obvious on that last play. Number one, Allen Branch lost his footing. The big Michigan defensive lineman trying to close in on Smith. Number two, Leon Hall should have wrapped up Robisky. So a cut, one just an unfortunate break for the Wolverines, and the other a big time mistake by their best corner. And you also, just another example of how explosive the Ohio State offense is. One second they're pinned inside their own 10, and a couple plays later they're already in Michigan territory. They're one of the more explosive offenses in the country because of the way they spread you out, and then they have speed and an experienced quarterback in Troy Smith. An amazing thing. I don't think Anthony Gonzalez and not yet. has had a ball thrown to him who most people thought would be the difference in this Ohio State offense today in this game. Instead, it has been Roy Hall who caught a touchdown pass. Robisky's been a go-to guy, and also Brian Hartline. And of course, again, early and often, but number 11, Anthony Gonzalez, remains one of the best in college football. There's still a lot of time to go. 628 now here in the second. Now watch. Watch Hall here. And Robisky slips it. The tackle was up way too high. And his dad, Terry Robisky, Brent, you referred to it earlier. Been in the NFL coaching for a long time. He's now receiver coach for the Cleveland Browns. Second down, powering ahead. Great fake. Wide open. Again. Touchdown, Ohio State. And it was off a beautiful fake by Troy Smith, a 39 yard explosion.
And just like this, the Buckeyes show everyone why they are the number one ranked team in the country. Petri adds the extra point. And Chris Wells has been a major player. He was the running back Troy Smith faked to on the dive play, and he carried out the fake beautifully with Ted Ginn breaking down the middle. Now, a somewhat rattled Wolverine team trails by 14 points, and we take a look at the first four drives. The Wolverines scoring early. But since then, they have bogged down against Jim Haycock and Luke Fickle's defense. Well, they went seven plays, 80 yards, went right down the field in complete command. A lot of play, a lot of play action passes. And since then, as you said, Luke Fickle and Jim Haycock making some adjustments. This is not only a big drive because it's 21 to 7. It's a huge drive for Chad Henney, I think, in this offense to get their confidence back. Much more pressure on Manningham. Here's a hole now for Hart. Hart breaks into the middle. And he's... Midfield and down stumbles to the 49 yard line. So Hart 30 yards his biggest run of the game. Interesting that Michigan goes back to the bread and butter. We keep talking about how important it is for them to throw the ball. But boy what a cut by Mike Hart. You want to know why Mike Hart's one of the best backs in the country because he can cut just like that on a dime. He takes advantage of Jamari O'Neal and gets upfield. Good block by Olibo the fullback Kirk as well on that lead draw right there. They release a little pressure. Corners back off here on first and ten from midfield. Somewhat surprisingly, they come right back with Hart after that big run, and this will put them in second and long. Vernon Golston makes the play defensively. But Brent, we go back to how Lloyd Carr identified first of all the problem from last year at seven and five they lost five football games in the fourth quarter in his opinion because they were a little out of shape but more importantly they couldn't run the football this is a team that's run the ball 65 percent of the time they are still a running team establish the run first that's the problem they have right now Manningham and Preston working on the left side of this formation. For the third straight time it's going to be Hart and this will be third and fairly short for the Wolverines after that run Brandon Mitchell making the stop so here comes the third down call for Lloyd Carr He's busy communicating with his offensive assistants the coordinator Mike DeBoard moving to that position prior to the season the biggest change zone blocking they worked long and hard with the assistant coaches from the Denver Broncos. And of course that's a lot of cut blocking at the line of scrimmage that freed Hart's big run on this drive. But here now is your third and two. Here comes a linebacker blitz. Henny against it throws high and incomplete. And there's a penalty flag. The penalty flag is thrown against Malcolm Jenkins. And this will give the Wolverines a first down. This is the second big penalty against Ohio State. 15 yard penalty, previous spot. Automatic, first down. And let's take a look at this because, as you know, in the NFL, you can't touch them after five yards. Now, the question here the only question I have was that football in the air when he collisioned him? Because I didn't really a, see a lot of holding there, or anything. There was right nothing there. downfield. It had to be the initial contact right up to, uh, near the line of scrimmage. That official is looking right at the ball in the air, folks. That's where the flag comes out. Ball goes in the air. You cannot hold up a receiver. First down and ten. Ball inside the 30-yard line. Chad Henney's under pressure. Sacked him down at the 40-yard line. Golston is there. Joel Pinton is there. Richardson in on him. The linebacker comes. John Kerr on the blitz, occupying two offensive linemen. A mistake that time by Mark Beal not coming over because it freed Pinton to come right 
through the right through the interior of the offensive line a mistake and miscommunication because of the blitz there from John Kerr. And let's think back when this season started everyone wanted to know could Ohio State's offense score enough points because of the young Ohio State defense. Kirk, they only give up seven points a game here. Yep, number one in the country coming into the game. Second and 20. Got his man down the sideline. Touchdown. They put it in the hands of number 16, Adrian Arrington. 37 yards for the Michigan touchdown and the Wolverines right back in it. What a play not only by Arrington but for this offense what I thought I thought was interesting is with two receivers to the bottom of the screen the Ohio State defense got caught up in the speed of Steve Breston and it opened up a huge hole to the outside to Arrington. Kirk if you're going to run that wheel route it takes a lot of time. Yep. Great pass protection by the Michigan front. Revis tacks on the extra point. Back to seven. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> 14. And this will come out the, uh, on the 20 yard line. A little confusion here by Ohio State's defense. Breston actually is going to go to the post. Arrington's coming out to set it up, and then a wheel route down the sidelines. Confusion because of the corner going to the middle of the field following the post. Yeah. Kirk, Look at the right. vacancy on the outside. Donald Washington playing outside thirds bit the post didn't take care of his area responsibility on the field. But keep in mind when Ohio State goes to nickel Antonio Smith goes to nickel Donald Washington comes in as the fifth defensive back at corner. Antonio Pittman the running back for the Buckeyes. Take over on their own 20 yard line there's a fake to him. And a strike and Gonzalez's first catch of the game for a first down at the 31 on first down from the gun into Ginn's hands and that's his sixth catch of the game already. Ohio State continuing to work with coach the three and four receiver look and it's again just to try to exploit the Michigan secondary with Troy Smith's arm. Well you know what I read this week they're talking about Troy Smith maybe a second or third round draft choice. Are you kidding me. Troy Smith not a first round draft choice. I would take yeah. him in the first round right now. I don't care if he's five eleven and a half. You, you know the comparisons to Vince Young. You know, I talked with him this week. You know who he reminds me of Drew Brees. Oh, Drew exactly. Brees is who Troy Smith is. He's more like Drew Brees than any other quarterback I've seen. Here's second and three now for Troy. He stands in that pocket and hits Robisky again for a first down. At the 45 yard line and Pops has got to be awfully proud of Brian Robisky here today. Well, he is having a great game and this is an idea his arm strength. He has the ability to squeeze it in there right into the face of that defense oh. and look how tight a window that was. But he has such velocity on his throws. Six of 16 of 20 for 196 yards and takes a lick. I mean he was smashed by Sean Crable. Number two got loose on him that time. Crables from Massillon, Ohio. I think Sean Crables the the wild card to this defense. They have done such a good job with Ron English moving Crable around. He's a linebacker, but they move him around and try to confuse the offensive line to get pressure. And that time they were successful. And Brett, remember Lloyd Carr told us the other night, fastest linebacker in the history of Michigan football. Says Sean it all Crable. right there. Second and ten. Here's Gonzalez again open underneath for another first down Ohio State steps out of bounds at the 31 yard line about every break that we have gone to coach and I've turned to each other and said have they thrown yet to, to <laughs> Gonzalez because it just doesn't seem like he's involved yet when you knew that eventually they would have to go to him they clear it out and give him the ball in space and tackling at the corner position for Michigan continues to haunt him you saw Johnny Sears right there miss that tackle on Gonzalez. Emptying that backfield out again. First down and 10 from the 31. And using the tight end underneath for a few yards. That's Rory Nickel. Troy Smith is spreading the ball around to any number. 
of receivers in this game Robisky and Hall and Hartline and Gonzalez and now Nickel. I mean, it's amazing how he's dumping it off to everybody. He just spraying this Wolverine secondary. That time they used Teddy Ginn and Anthony Gonzalez as decoys to set up a tight end screen over the middle of the field. Second and seven, he's going to wing it again. Gonzalez at the 11. That's his third catch on this drive. Well, they're going to him, and they're finally getting the matchup they, that they need in this slot with Gonzalez going up against Chris Graham, a linebacker. We did the Ohio State-Iowa game, and that's something that Ohio State exploited against the Hawkeyes. Big holes in that interior of the Michigan defense. And Ohio State, by spreading the field, throwing it, they've taken this front seven from Michigan basically out of this football game. And that defense has just asked to catch its breath. It's so Time hard. Out, Michigan. I'm sorry, Brent. It's so hard for a safety. It's so hard for a linebacker to stay with the slot receivers on Ohio State. You have to pay so much attention with the safety over top and helping against Teddy Ginn, coach, that it opens it up over the middle of the field. Getting the pressure on Troy Smith. But you know, the ball comes out so quick. Tough to get there. On first down, another completion. This one to the seven yard line this time. Robisky the target. Still two timeouts left for Ohio State. I think Jim wants one of them yep. right now. now. He's got a rule change a few years back. The coaches can come out and call a timeout. And uh, while we take this break here, let us check in with Matt Weiner and another update. So it's almost pick your poison with the way their their offense attacks. Let's see what Trussell wanted to emphasize in that timeout. Slant Gonzalez touchdown Ohio State. That's what he wanted to emphasize. Stick it in the end zone. Number 11, four catches in this drive. We were wondering where he was, but remember we said a lot of time left for number 11. Play zone coverage against this guy. He is just picking well, them apart. You might as well try to go to a dime coverage because you're not going to have any success with Chris Graham or any other linebacker for that matter walked out over Anthony Gonzalez. Extra point is added by Petri. You know, when you have Gonzalez here and you've got a linebacker walked here, he's got the option to go whichever way he wants. And in space, it's difficult. He tries to take away the inside, but you're talking about the best wide receiver on the Ohio State team as far as route running, and it's just so hard in space for a linebacker of that size to stay with the quickness of Gonzalez. What happens? Even Michigan runs out of talented corners to try to match up and play man under coverage on five quick wide receivers like Ohio State has. Tremendous game plan by Jim Trestle. Brent, you remember yesterday I asked him, is there a chance you'll go a lot of two backs to try to get Michigan an eight-man front and throw the ball down the field? Now I realize why he looked at me like I was crazy. <laughs> he was going to go five wide receivers <laughs> all day. Totally to him before the game. <laughs> yeah. And uh, guys, three different Buckeye receivers have a touchdown now. We'll see how this game finishes up. But I, I can just tell you, as a former Ohio State quarterback, Troy Smith had the best two games of any Ohio State quarterback in the history of this rivalry coming into today. In fact, that's all we heard about all week. You wondered if the pressure to live up to those expectations might be too much. And it's 241 <laughs> yards. Three, well, two and a half games without a single interception. And again, they keep it out of Preston's hands. Fumble, loose ball. And there's still 13 ticks of the clock left here. And the scrum for the football. Buckeyes are hoping. The fullback down there, Olibo. Having a little bit of difficulty with the short kickoffs as they keep it out of Bruston's hands. Margin is 14. 42 points put up in the first half of an Ohio State Michigan game. That has to rate with one of the highest first halves ever. And in a the great job of by Steve Bruston. Excuse me, Brent. Steve Bruston coming in there. The point Lloyd Carr makes. Steve Bruston does a lot of things for this football team that sometimes go unnoticed. Big recovery was, right there. That was because. They're mixing up the play calling enough and he's getting rid of the ball before the pressure can get there. So we'll see if they can maybe crank that pressure up here in the second half. Here comes again. Out just shy fumble balls down. 
Ball was marked down. You could see that it popped up for Ohio State. Incomplete in and out of Gens hands and it is suddenly third and ten. But you know I love the play calling of Jim Tressel not getting conservative right here coming out in the second half. Why he has a 28 14 lead is because he's been wide open and throwing it and he's continuing to do it. They just have to execute. Ted Ginn was wide open. I think he Got just it. said four wide as he sent this personnel package out. Relaying the signal, so then the hand signal is passed on to Troy Smith. He checks the wristband, calls the play. <laughs> and they got more than four. They got five out there right now. Again, this has been lethal. Again, and a quick tackle short of the first down, and a good stop by Morgan Trent. It's exactly what Michigan needed to start the second half down by 14. They needed to get a three and out to get Chad Henney the ball back and also show their defense. This defense has a lot of pride made some adjustments by Ron English and I know Ohio State had chances but the bottom line is they didn't execute and Michigan gets the ball back. And you said it just getting off the field is a huge confidence builder for Michigan even though Ohio State helped them to get off yep, the field that but time. Try to regain that swagger. This is only the second punt of the game for Trapasso. That's the first three and out for the Buckeyes and off the side and out of bounds trying to keep it out of Breston's hands. So good field position for Chad Henney in Michigan. 60 yards away it's only 31 yards on the punt. So there you see the Wolverines scoring with their first and their second drives of the game. Arrington scored that second one but the Buckeyes pounced back and answered. And what really helps by Jim Tressel being aggressive. I mean Michigan has the football right now. Obviously 14 11 left in the third quarter. They want to run the football. They don't look like they're going to here. They're in five wide receiver. Michigan empties the backfield. And a quick throw on the flanker screen and that's Manningham's first catch since the opening drive of the game. Antonio Smith the corner with the stop. How about Antonio Smith? How about that guy? Kirk and they told us yesterday story. they did weren't sure this guy could ever be a starter for them. Obviously a three year walk on wins a scholarship. That was a tremendous play. Right well, there. well he's physical. He's a number two tackler on the team and he's five nine and one hundred and ninety five pounds playing the boundary corner. And he's no way he's one ninety five. No <laughs> way. Officially that was a lateral. So it is a run by Manningham and here comes Hart. First man cannot stop the little rascal and he gets to midfield with John Kerr the linebacker there. Tremendous leg strength by Michael Hart. He is going to run through a tackle by James Laronitis right here. Great play by Laronitis fighting off the fullback but Kirk you see the strength of Michael Hart. Strength vision balance competitive spirit. I think he's the spark plug in this Michigan team and a big turnaround that they've enjoyed this year. Third and short in the teeth of 100,000. First down and Hart breaks free. One man to beat and he pushes him out of bounds. Malcolm Jenkins the corner saves the touchdown. 33 yards for Hart. And Bo Schembechler would love this one because watch the fullback Alibo right there. A great block on Brandon Mitchell the safety up in the box. That is Bo Schembechler isolation football Brent. And, and Bo would also love his left tackle Jake Long and the way he took control of Golston turned his body out and opened that hole. First down come right back with the running play to the two yard line with their opening drive of the second half. Lloyd Carr's Wolverine showing a lot of fight as we open the second half. They're trailing by 14 looking to make it a seven again. This is Michigan football. This is what you think about when you think about the Wolverines over the years. It's a big powerful offensive line in the running game. So much notoriety towards their zone blocking scheme. And they just said we're going to roll up our sleeves here to start this second half and see who the better man is. On the first end goal. 
Hart. Touchdown, <laughs> Michigan. Call your friends, folks. Call them right yeah. now. This one's getting real interesting. Isn't it amazing? They start the game with a great drive. They come out in the second half and have a great drive. They just have to sustain it and maintain it right now. If Lloyd, when Lloyd Carr stood in there at halftime and he said, this is what has to happen when we start the second half, this is exactly what needed to happen for Michigan to not only climb back into the game and hopefully for them they get within seven, but also on the sideline, there's a different feel. I'm sure Lisa's seeing that right now. And remember what Bonnie heard from Jim Trussell. He talked so much tonight about passing and five receivers. Michigan starts the second half, five plays running the football right down the field against the Ohio State defense to set the tone for them in the second half. Interesting kicking strategy. The Wolverines content to let Ginn take his chances. Coming out. Meanwhile, they're keeping it away from Preston, and he's down short of the 20-yard line. Now, cannot wait to see John David Booty and Nate Longshore. What a what a great quarterback battle tonight in the Pac-10. How about next week? Brady Ooh. Quinn yeah. and John David Booty. Yep. First down and 10, and here is the handoff. Prescott Burgess coming up to make the stop and now here is Troy Smith in the big game just what you talked about yeah, this is the four biggest games that he's had in his career and the way he's been able to step up you see the touchdowns to interception ratio which is amazing and Bob just uh, circle that you include the first half tonight against Michigan he's just one of these guys that the bigger the game the better he plays and the calmer he is and his team seems to feed off of that Look, zero interceptions yep. The Buckeyes spread the field again. Four wide and two tight ends. High and incomplete. Threw quickly, and he was under pressure that time. The Wolverines got heat on number 10. We check in with Bonnie. Well, Brent, this has been a really emotional week for Troy Smith, as you imagine. He's a fifth-year senior on Thursdays. All the seniors addressed the team, and Troy told me this week, he said, I knew I would break down at some point, and Thursday night was it. He said, I was standing at the podium looking at all of my teammates. I just wanted them to know how much I love them, how much I appreciate them, and how much a part they have been of my maturation process. And on a third and nine, Trussell sends in a running back Antonio Pittman for Troy Smith in that empty look that time the Wolverines were bringing thunder that previous play a timeout has been used here by the Buckeyes so they use one of their three second half timeouts here well when you listen to Troy Smith talk about his teammates you just understand the maturity that he has shown under Trestle. I don't live in this moment for me. You know, I, I live and I try to do everything for uh, my teammates and everybody else that I represent because the average student, the average person doesn't understand that the daily decisions that you make affect so many other people. It's not just you in anything. They affect pretty much everybody else. He is the cover boy for showing progress. Here's a young man who had a little problem. He took some money under the table. He paid his debt, came back. He now lectures youngsters about it, about doing the right thing. I can't tell you how much he has matured, Kirk, since coming to Columbus and experiencing and the leadership. This is the lead. Look at him looking into the, to the huddle. He's sensing right now momentum is swinging to Michigan. He is challenging his team in that huddle to help him out here on this third down. And did you see the players look back at him? Did you see that? Whatever you say, sir. Did yes, sir. Yep. Third and nine. And again, the blitz is coming. They try to pinch 10 in. Hit him on the release. Intercepted on the deflection. Allen Branch came back. Big Allen. Ball deflected. First turnover of the afternoon. But it was the heat that was being brought by the Wolverines. And we talked about halftime adjustments. How does Ron English, with the time he has at halftime, the 20 minutes, come up with a plan to pressure this spread look? This time, though, they only rush four. Flush Troy Smith out. He throws the football into traffic. And how about Allen Branch at 320 pounds? We just talked about how Troy Smith has never thrown an interception in big games and Michigan applying the pressure. He takes the chance deep in his own territory. Ball's deflected and branches there to secure it. From the 25-yard line, 
More than 100,000 roaring in Chad Henney's ears. Coming back with Mike Hardy, slips on the cutback and still battles his way to the 20 yard line. Strong run. Curtis Terry makes the stop. Second and five. Buckeyes are blitzing. And Hart battling and giving ground of a couple of yards. Third down coming up, and it is huge for Michigan. Boy, what a change of momentum. Boy, Carr and his staff deserve a lot of credit for the way this second half has started. Seven. Has to throw it away. Under tremendous pressure that time on the third down, Vernon Golston in on Henny. Great effort by Golston, the right defensive end. I mean, he knocks number 57, Adam Cross, the guard, back into the quarterback. That was a great pass rush by Vernon Goldstein. Garrett Revis, 39 yard attempt. And Garrett Revis pulls the Wolverines three points closer. And this is probably the most impressive stat I've seen all year. And let me explain this. Ohio State has turned the ball over now 14 times. That is the first points Ohio State's defense has given up all year after a turnover. That is the most unbelievable statistic I have ever seen in college football. Kind of one of those hidden notes yeah. throughout the season that's become very impressive. Meanwhile, they've scored a ton after their takeaway. As you could see at the top part of that graphic. And now oh, here we go now. Michigan with a touchdown and a field goal after the turnover. They've closed back in, and here comes again. Searching to get outside. And he's out of bounds about the 20 yard line. We check in down below with Bonnie. And there's a flag as they chase again. This will be against the kicking team as they come over after number seven. Costly. We check in with Bonnie. Well, Brent, after throwing just his fifth pick all season, Troy Smith was absolutely inconsolable on the bench. No less than five of his teammates tried to come up, cheer him up. He would not even make eye contact. Troy knows how much is on the line in this game. The Big Ten Championship, the trip to the Rose Bowl, and even though he won't think about individual accolades, if he doesn't step up tonight, we won't be calling him the front runner for the Heisman. Not absolutely, obviously, but this performance could affect that bit. First down and 10 for Troy Smith and the Buckeyes who lead it 28 24. Right back to throw again after the interception. Here's Ginn. And he's out of bounds in the arms of Leon Hall. Obviously, the confidence Jim Tressel in Troy Smith. He's not going to get conservative, and Troy Smith is going to keep throwing it. I think it's the confidence that he has and the fact that he's going to make good decisions with the ball even after the interception he goes back to that. But this is where you really show what you're made out of as a quarterback when you hit some adversity for the few times all season. With White leading the way breaking free again. Touchdown Ohio State. This time. It's Antonio Pittman. The first half belonged to Chris Wells, but they explode the middle again. 56 yards for the junior, and the Akron twins, Pittman and Chris Wells, have done the job. Boy, that late hit on the kickoff 
gave Ohio State's offense some life and some yardage and room to work with. Petri tacks on the extra point. 35 24. Watch the middle of the offensive line here. Well, first of all, Steve Raring, number 71, comes around on the power play and gets a block. Keep in mind, this is the number one rush defense in all of college football. Once they crease the line of scrimmage, you see number 22, Jamar Adams, the safety, up so close. There's no one in the second level of defense. And once Kirkie broke the line of scrimmage, he was gone. Well, it was about speed and acceleration once he got through that initial surge for the Michigan defense. But I think Michigan put nine guys up tight to the line of scrimmage on such short yardage for Ohio State to come up with a first down. Second time tonight we've seen Ohio State come up with a big play when it's been second and very short. Jim Trussell is simply the best play caller in college football that I've watched in a long, long time. Michigan gives up 29 yards a game rushing. That can't happen against the Michigan defense. Two long runs like Ohio State's had tonight. Deep. Preston will take a knee and it'll come out on the 20 yard line. Let us go to Matt Weiner in New York. We got a vote, don't we? <laughs> I think Antonio Pittman. Oh. <laughs> we welcome you back to Columbus with Bob Davey, Kirk Herbstreit, Lisa Saltons, and Bonnie Bernstein. I'm Brent Musburger. Notre Dame took care of Army, so they're on target to head out west next week and play their arch rival USC. Now they'll try to dig in and stop Chad Henney and the Wolverines who trail it by 11. And where has Mario Manningham gone since the first drive? Deflected, incomplete, second down and ten. It's a play they hit earlier on the first drive. A quick slant. They wanted to try to get the ball that time to Manningham. But Curtis Terry got back, but it was deflected up at the line of scrimmage by Jay Richardson. Second and ten for the Wolverines. Hart slanting to the left. And picking up a little better than half of it in Laurenitis, the linebacker over there defensively. A very instinctive linebacker. You see Michigan, they love to run left because of big offensive tackle number 77, Jake Long. I heard Mel Kuyper the other day on the Radio say this guy and Joe Thomas at Wisconsin. He's only a junior, has another year. They both could be top 10 draft picks in the NFL draft. This guy is a man. And what a difference it is, Brent, now that he's healthy this year. Long is the senior. This is third down and four. And he battling the noise level here. Has time. Fires it off into the middle for the first and ten. So the offensive line gave him time, and Arrington, who scored his last touchdown at the end of the first half, 15 more yards for Arrington. And I really think the injury to Mario Manningham really helped the development of Adrian Arrington. He has become a guy they can count on. In clutch situations, Kirk, you beat Antonio Smith, the corner. In man to man coverage. Hart. And in on that stop is Golston, who has played very well here in the defensive line for the Buckeyes. We've talked a lot about Troy Smith and his arm strength. Back to that previous play, the arm strength of Chad Henney. He has a tremendous arm. When I, when I had to. Uh, Go over to the Ohio State facility this week to interview Troy Smith, and I said, "If there's one trade about Chad Henney you could have, what would it be?" That's what he said. Armstrong. Yeah. From this hash on the left side, guys, 
He throws as well as anybody to the right sideline. He has a powerful arm. Second down and nine. Straight back. Coming deep. Got Arrington again. First and ten at the 33. And that demonstrated the arm strength, fellas, right there. You just said he likes to throw to the right as well as anybody. He, he, he just beat the Ohio State defense in man to man coverage, and this time they exploit the zone coverage, coach. And now they're going to get three deep coverage, and Adrian Denerton is going to go right down the seam. Watch the safety run away from him right here. Again, a great timing throw right down the hash. He split the corner and the safety. Here's Hart. Nothing doing. Hard to bounce outside to the left. And Quinn Pitcock, the fine defensive tackle senior in the state of Ohio. And he figures to go high in the draft when you talk about all these fellows that we're going to be seeing someday on Sunday. And I'm sure that so many of the, the great players of the past, Buckeyes and the Wolverines, who are playing Sunday football, are watching this one right now. Second down and 10. throw and it was incomplete pressure was being applied by Vernon Goldston so Vernon, Vernon's a sophomore from Detroit and Kirk he's having a heck of a day yeah, he's been probably the biggest surprise for the Ohio State defense this year he's just going to overpower Jake Long come to his inside shoulder then he goes through the back Mike Hart and still kicks to Chad Henney that's an explosive move now isn't it he got a two for right there he got two <laughs> over <laughs> Third and ten. The crowd's barking. And he can't get it off because of David Patterson, the senior. David Patterson is going to beat Reuben Riley number 72 right there on an inside move. There's so much talk this year guys about how young the Ohio State defense is. You just talked about Pitcock. He and Patterson have really provided leadership. Going to go here. Going to go on fourth down and ten. Manningham is off to his left. Preston and Arrington to the right. Throwing in underneath, that's Breston slips on the cut. Ohio State football. Malcolm Jenkins with the coverage. Breston tried to cut back, and his feet gave way on the new sod. Breston on the crossing route. You know it's going to take yards after the catch. And right there, obviously, the turf did give out on him right there. The turf gives out, and Malcolm Jenkins is there, and safety coming over. You can see why. Lloyd Carr decided to go for that and really out of field goal range. It was where the turf was torn up. The inside handoff here on first down. You know, a lot of big games, you see one guy doing it snap after snap. This has been spread around across this entire team. Second and six for Troy Smith. Penalty flag is thrown by the umpire, Terrence Taylor. We have not had many flags thrown by Rick Nelson, but he was right in the middle of that one. There's Rick. So Dave Perry has sent in a group of outstanding officials here to work this game headed up by Bill Lamagne. It's an honor I'm sure for all these guys to to be assigned to this game. Holding number 50 on the offense. That penalty's declined. Third down. That's the center Doug Daddish. He was the tackle. 
in the offensive line a year ago and when Nick Mangold moved on to the New York Jets and I believe Mangold has missed only one snap this year if I heard correctly on a radio last week he was out for one play and somebody told me that he had made all the line calls already for the Jets and he was one of the best centers I'd ever watched over here at Ohio State now, he's a good one now his roommate was A.J. Hawk how about those two together huh? A.J. and they are pretty good now. third down and 11 here comes Troy Hyde incomplete ball was intended for Rory Nickel the tight end Lamar Woodley was applying the pressure again we're going to see Woodley right there a little bit of slip close to a late hit by David Harris coming on the outside right there but another big stop by the Michigan defense. Paso on the punt now for the Bucks. Breston's back. He's going to let this one go and it'll go out of bounds. They angle punt it and it'll be spotted at the 34 yard line. Kirk, did you spend any time in there on the Thursday night? <laughs> no. In school? No, no, I missed out on that. <laughs> Any high and incomplete. Arrington. Down 11. Hart, you see that first man can't get him. And he battles for eight yards. And <laughs> Jenkins, the corner, Hart is amazing when the first tackler just cannot bring him down. How about the quickness in the hole after the jump there, and Coach? Watch this move on Brandon Mitchell. He splits the two linebackers. But he makes Brandon Mitchell miss right there. <laughs> That's nice. What quickness. Here's your third down and one. Hart's the favorite. Let's see what the Wolverines come up with here. They're going to try to throw for it. Going long downfield. Manningham Jenkins jumps for it and he's got it. Intercepts it. On third and short. Michigan gambles and Malcolm Jenkins makes them pay. What about this call first of all guys. I don't like it but it's third and short and you throw the ball down the field like that you got Jake Long at 320 pounds at left tackle. Michael Hart just made the safety break his ankles in the open field. I would have run the ball. They've had so much success running the football. Let's see if it is an interception. That ball be looked, reviewed. Yeah it looked like I don't think his hands got underneath it. It looked like the ball actually hit the surface. Going to have to review that. I think you guys are exactly right. Under review. So the former Big Ten referee upstairs will start to take a look at it. In the third and one call, they wanted the one on one matchup with Manningham against Malcolm Jenkins. They, they got to look. And Jenkins is one of the better cover corners in the Big Ten. But I guess my point would be, and I understand, if it would have worked, it would have been a great call. I'd probably be on boat right now. But Michigan made a huge commitment, Kirk, as you know. The reason they felt they were 7-5 last year, they couldn't run the football when they had to. That was an opportunity, in my opinion, to show you can run it when you have to. Not to mention, we've seen this second half, their offensive line take back control of the line of scrimmage. A minute and a half left here in the third quarter and uh, upstairs they're they're reviewing some of you might not be familiar with the college rule it's unlike the NFL it doesn't always have to be challenged by a coach every play in reality is being reviewed upstairs even though there is one coach's challenge available as you go around the country let's see what Lamagne has got here. Review, indisputable video evidence the pass is incomplete fourth down Michigan at the 42 yard line it's the right call Great job. Yeah, exactly. And, and not to mention, for as much as replay has taken a hit, how efficient was that crew with Tom Quinn? Now, Henny was putting his helmet back on, and Lloyd's got a decision to make. Trailing, minute and a half left. See, now he brings Henny back. Henny wanted to go out and go for it. There was no question, and they're going to have him sit down. What do you think about this decision now? All well, quarterbacks want to Just go like Hart Street. Right? Yeah, let's Hart go. Street let's did the same thing it. when Earl Bruce was here, right? I mean, Hart Street was all the way out on the field on fourth down <laughs> trying to go for it. <laughs> And he's and he's wants a chance to tack this Buckeye defense. Now we'll see if that 
review helps or hurts Michigan because you're punting the ball to Teddy Ginner Gonzalez. <laughs> they may have been better off if it was an interception. There's no doubt about that. Very interesting. I believe the ball was like about the 23 yard line is where the pick was. So let's see what happens. Who gains or who loses here in field position? Ryan hangs it high. So they pick up three yards. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. And it'll come out on the 20 yard line. That was a 57 yard punt. We take a look at the. Uh, the two quarterbacks, the fellows have missed Brady or have mentioned Brady Quinn, I should say. 22 or 30 against Army, 217, 3 TD, had a pick, and Notre Dame rolled, and that's what Troy's done here today. If I may put my studio hat on here, if Troy Smith wins this game with the first half that he's had, the Heisman race is over. It's it's Troy Smith's trophy to lose coming into the game. If he lost, if he loses the game, it opens it up for Brady Quinn. There's Pittman stumbling forward. I, first of all, that's my I got a needle that's my opinion. As an alum now. Yeah. Now, Bobby, you get your chance now. Do you, you, it's still open, right? Well, first of all, Brady Quinn from right here in Dublin, Ohio. Sure. I'm talking five miles yeah. from here. Yeah. I'm a big, big, big Brady Quinn fan as I've been for four years. But if I'm Troy Smith's family, go ahead and get that super save. Yeah, get come those on. Nice now, New York. On. Get the non-refundable ticket because you're going. I'm throwing in my little guy, Mike Hart, into this mix. Are you? If, if they can pull this thing out. There you go. Of course, you did say I'm going to throw course. Steve. Yeah, if he wins, then he wins the trophy. I'll Steve Slayton at West Virginia. Yeah, that's fair. Oh, oh, loose on the ground. Michigan. Branch is in on it. Allen Branch, who had an interception earlier, and suddenly this game takes another twist. And, and Doug Gaddish, who played tackle last year, Brent, you mentioned it moved the center. You see the cast on his hand right there. He broke that wrist early in the season or had a wrist injury. Since that point, it's healed, but Jim Bowman, the offensive line coach, makes him snap with the cast on because of superstition reasons. That's the first bad snap he's had. And here comes Hart trying to stretch it to the left, and he is tracked down from behind. David Patterson was coming from the backside, and Lawrence Wilson was over there, and uh, those two big fellas uh, simply uh, surrounded him. So the final seconds have ticked away in the third quarter. The money quarter, folks, is coming up. Ohio State in a high-scoring duel leads Michigan by 11. Second down from the nine-yard line against Laurinaitis and this stiff Buckeye defense coming up. Into the teeth of the crowd. The closed in. In the round. Preston trying to get free. Needs a block. End zone reaches touchdown Michigan. The nine yard end around. Steve Rustin, the senior from Braddock, Pennsylvania. What great speed coming around the edge. Jay Richardson had no chance to get to him, and the acceleration that he has allows him to get across the goal line and into the end zone. And I do see you see the right knee down, but I think that ball was extended to break the plane of that goal line right there. I think that'll stand as a touchdown. They will go for two here. Trailing by five. They'll chase it now. And there could be a review on this. Yes, it will be under review. When did the knee hit the ground and where was the football? So Lamagne will come over. Quinn upstairs will take one more look at this. Now, where's the ball when the knee touches down? Knee down. This one is very, very close. It must be indisputable now. And my guess is that it depends on your point of view. In Columbus, they're saying knee was down. It's short of the end zone. In Ann Arbor, they're saying he clearly broke the plane. <laughs> and that translates <laughs> to it's not indisputable, right? That's right. I don't think that one's usually be in a case like that. Usually they go with the call on the field where the official was standing right there. 
Now you wonder, uh, Coach, who do you think's got the edge if they wind up going for two on the next play here? A little more time for the offense, but. Uh, Following the review, indisputable video evidence. The runner did not score. Ooh. It'll be third and goal, half yard line. <laughs> I am making number 20 a prohibitive favorite. And what Lloyd should do is forget about the controversy and concentrate on the next play. This does you no good. Knee was down. That's the ruling upstairs by Quinn. Get to work on the next play. This is wasted time. Brent, you're right. It's third down now. He said, the ball will be obviously inside the one yard line once they get it spotted. And you have to think it's four down territory, obviously, sure. right now sure. for Michigan. Sure. But crowd noise, such a huge factor right now on these real short yardage plays. Of course, Henny could try to put his helmet down and go right up behind Mark Beal, the center, or step over behind Alex Mitchell or Adam Krause, one of the guards. Third down. They offset Olivo to the right. Hart stop can't be stopped. Touchdown this time for Michigan, his third of the afternoon. An amazing performance by five foot nine inch Mike Hart out of Syracuse. 196 pounds. You want to have an idea how powerful this guy is? He's going to run right into a safety and Brandon Mitchell and a linebacker, John Kerr, two of the more physical tacklers on the Ohio State defense, and he ran right over top of them to get into the end zone. Now they'll go for two. Trying to put it on three. If they settle for four, that would be a little different than five. You can chase it. Timeout, Trussell. Trussell, I believe, is down to one timeout left here in the second half with this decision. But he saw something he didn't like. He wants to, whatever he can do, try to leave it on a five rather than a three. I'm curious right here why Lloyd is kicking this extra point. He suddenly changed. And why the ball is offset and not in the middle. It wasn't a fake. They changed their mind. And Garrett Rivas puts it on a four. Puzzling, folks. Real puzzling. Time out. Troy Smith chomping at the bit. He's had a couple of turnovers here in this game. Again runs up to the 10. They try to put him on that side of the field. And he is down at the 26 yard line. And so Troy Smith Kirk with final words from Coach Tressel on what to come up with here. Legends are made in this rivalry. He's already had a chance last two years. Think about this second half of what has happened to him. He has got to be able to regroup their first five drives for Ohio State. Turned the ball over twice. They've had two punts and they've mixed in a score. But Troy Smith wants to go to that elite status forever he's got to be able to find a way to win this game in the fourth quarter four down linemen for the Wolverines offensive line holds and he snaps it off underneath his second second down and three Pittman banging his way for a first down you know Kirk you bring up a great point I mean in a game like this you either remembered Yep. or forgotten as a coach or a player how you do in this game it's not about the body of work bottom line all the season was great but it comes down to the fourth quarter right now what your legacy is that's right for, for both uh, both teams and I've been very surprised here in the second half to see Ohio State going away from that five four and five wide receiver look that helped him so much to generate those points in the first half The power eye formation sticking on the ground with Pittman. One of the little subplots, the Heisman Trophy. And of course, through the years, these two great schools have won their share. Eddie George in attendance here today. He won it for Ohio State. Desmond Howard was on the set earlier. He won one up at Michigan with that. Famous pose in the end zone in a game against the Buckeyes. And there's the five receiver look that we just talked about. Second and six. 
They're blitzing it, playing man. A strike. Again, spins around to the outside. And out of bounds, but he crosses the 40-yard line to the 38. Lamar Woodley, with the blitz, freed him up to get pressure on Troy Smith, and he was just a hair too late in getting to Smith. And when you don't get to Troy Smith and you're man-to-man -man on the outside, Morgan Trent against Troy, against Teddy Ginn, if he doesn't make that play, there's nobody else there, and he almost went around him for a score. And that's why if I'm going to play man-to-man -man on Ted Ginn, I come up and press him and bump him at the line, even though he has great speed, Kirk, because I think he's more dangerous after the catch. First and ten, the ball at the 37-yard line. In underneath to the tight end, crossing Rory Nickel and out of bounds on the far side. Good first down play. When you talked about Jim Trestle, you mentioned a little bit earlier, just a second ago, you're a little surprised he's not opening it up a little more in the four and five wide receivers. Once he got a little field position, yep. he got right back to what got him to this point, yep. Kirk. First Miss mother and his sister watching here. Second and four. There's Troy. And that short of the first down. So this will bring up a third and short. And Brent, let's go back just. <laughs> I'm a little surprised, as we all were, of Lloyd Clark kicking that extra point to make it a four-point game here in the fourth quarter. And why he didn't go for two, I'm still not really sure why. Right now, he's more concerned about stopping this third down play here. <laughs> Again, comes to the bottom of your screen. That's Gonzalez in the slot. Ever dangerous from that spot. Fumble. Ball's on the ground again on a bad snap. Daddish, who snapped one high a short time ago, has another bad snap. And Michigan takes over. Goes back to your point, Coach, about how he doesn't have a good grip on the football. Well, and he has that cast on yeah. that right hand, but Kirk, he's gone about five weeks straight of not having a bad snap. But you know what? A lot, it's, it, a lot of confidence. People don't think about shotgun snaps or punt snappers. When you lose that confidence, it's hard to get it back. He never had to grip no, on that football. Yeah, he never had control of the ball at all. He slipped out of his hand. When you talk about guys being remembered or forgotten on this game, Daddis right now has to bounce back. First and ten for Henny and the Wolverines. Down four. Under pressure. Dropped by Manningham, who is coming across the middle as we check in with Matt Weiner. Second down and 10 for the Wolverines. And he's going to run Mike Hart on a cutback. He gives ground, and this will be third down and short coming up for Michigan. Talk so much tonight about what Troy Smith has meant to this rivalry, but how about Chad Henney? Chad Henney right now, the ball is starting to come into, into his hands in a position to be remembered as well in this rivalry. Played it early as a freshman and a sophomore. It didn't go his way. This is a quarterback that's been on the road in places like Penn State earlier this year. He's been to Notre Dame. He's been to Columbus twice. His poise is crucial here as the Wolverines try to come back to win this game. Slot formation to the right. Needs three. Fires for it. Incomplete. Preston was not free. All over him, Donald Washington that time. And it brings up a fourth and three. Another great stop by the Ohio State defense. We showed that graphic a little bit earlier about sudden change after a turnover. That time they bounced back after giving up 10 points in the third quarter after turnovers. What was he thinking if you read those lips right there by that Michigan fan? 
Mesco back to punt. Gian and Gonzalez back deep for the Bucks. They set the return. Gins got it on the 16 and thrown down at the 15 yard line. And terrific coverage that time by the Wolverines as they come right down the field with Darnell Hood, the captain of the special team. From the 16 yard line after Darnell Hood's tremendous tackle on Ted Ginn. And we have a story about Hood that we'll tell you about here momentarily as Buckeyes come with a conservative draw play. During the week at Michigan, Hood played the role of number 10 Troy Smith. He's a speedster, a one time defensive back. He's been the captain of the special teams for Lloyd Carr's Michigan Wolverines. And watch this tackle on Ted Ginn. One hand pulls him down by the jersey, keeps him shy of the 20 yard line. And there's the young man. And uh, Lloyd Carr said to him at one point during practice, if I'd have known that you could throw the football that well, <laughs> I'd have put you in quarterback. <laughs> Great to see guys take so much pride in their special teams work. That's his job. Watch the shotgun snap right here. Great snap by Daddy. And second and eight, there's that fake. And Smith's going to take off himself. Steps out of bounds at the 29 yard line with a first and 10. And uh, Kirk, let's go back here now to yeah. the last six drives by the Buckeyes. And it's amazing to think that in the first half they scored 28 points. They had one punt. Ron English, the defensive coordinator, you could tell he's made some changes. The turnovers, Ohio State has hurt themselves, but the Michigan defense has played very well in this second half, considering how explosive Ohio State looked in that first half. Ron English, he's done an outstanding job as the new defensive coordinator this year. Has, has to be up for the Frank Boyles Award for the assistant coach of the year. First and 10 for the Bucks. And now timeout Michigan. Time out. Both teams Second. now down to one. Second team timeout. Ooh, that's not a happy Oof. camper right there. <laughs> he is all over his safety. Remember, he lost Willis Berenger earlier in this game. An Ohio Stadium record. 105,708 as they see number one versus number two, Ohio State, Michigan. The winner will go on to the national championship game. First down and 10. And a great fake again by Smith as he hands it off. It's like a draw play. Here's Pittman, daylight sideline, finally pushed out of bounds at the 45 yard line. David Harris. Well, it's a draw play after they fake to the left and the play opens up. It's really a matter, a matter of whether Antonio Pittman gets to the outside. But look who is downfield. Doug Daddish downfield on Adams of safety. He's 25 yards downfield. He obviously has the body to take care of that. But he needed something to get him back into this game. The old statue of Liberty, but how about the lick by David Harris, the linebacker on that sideline. 26 yards for Pittman. He too is over 100 yards rushing here today. Power look. And uh, beginning tomorrow, folks, you can download all the action from today's game as well as other classic games. You can mention 73, 97, 02 from the storied rivalry only on iTunes. That's iTunes. So you can download it all tomorrow. And right now we've had 66 points put up on the board. And Chris Wells checked in as the running back. He had that explosive run in the in the first half. The freshman Pittman with 125 yards. Wells with a 52 yard touchdown. Looking He's again out. middle and uh, sealed up by the Wolverines. 35 31 under nine minutes to go. Big debate in the last few weeks is could we see a rematch if this game were close in the national championship? Do you want the best two teams to play on January 8th in Glendale? Just answer that one question. Do you want the best two teams? To I, I came play? in with a pretty strong opinion not wanting to see a rematch, but after the way this game has gone, a lot's going to depend on USC tonight against Cal and then next week against Notre Dame. I'm very content to watch the last 20 oh, yes. of this one. Oh, yes. Third down and five. 
Showing blitz. Stands on the slant. And a first down Ohio State as he comes back. Then he hit number nine Brian Hartline. Richard freshman from North Canton Ohio who has become a factor in the passing game. Yeah, they had receivers three receivers to the left. He wanted to get the ball to Hartline the entire time and Hartline had to work hard to get off Johnny Sears who was physical in his coverage and did a good job but Hartline did not give up on the route and neither did Troy Smith. Antonio Pittman reports back in the 25 the running back for the Bucks he is right behind fullback Stan White Jr. Buried and this will bring up second and long. What a job by Greg Shiano and that coaching staff and the players at Rutgers. Second down and ten. Pressure hit on the release incomplete. And a blind side rip by Lamar Woodley who was in on number ten that time. We talked a lot about it. Ron English making adjustments. One of the adjustments I'm seeing is Anthony Gonzalez is one of the best receivers on Ohio State's team. Leon, there's a big hit, like you said, from Woodley on the outside, untouched. One of the adjustments is trying to put their best cover corner on a slot receiver in Anthony Gonzalez to shut him out. One of the biggest adjustments is standing Woodley up in this football game and getting him away from Schaefer and Boone and letting him blitz from the linebacker spot. What an adjustment by English. No wonder he's been coming from that spot. He's their defensive end over there and he was tied up in the first half. Third down and ten. There's a whistle before. Smith's debating it. Delay a game. Offense. He thought he got it off in time. Five yard penalty. Still third down. This makes it third and 15 now. Interesting to see what Ron English, the defensive coordinator, does on this call. They've been playing man to man coverage and blitzing this four wide, five wide look. But on third and 15, I look for I look for him to play zone. The front four needs to get a pass rush right here for Michigan. Gonzalez is your slot man now, and he is off to the left. He has made so many big plays the last couple of years for the Bucks. Looking in that direction. Smith has to take off. Dance is free now. He'll throw incomplete. And a penalty flag. Michigan will debate this. Crable over on the near side. Smith was going out of bounds. Personal foul. A huge call with 6.49 to go. The thing that Sean Crable did is he came high towards Troy Smith's headgear. Anytime you lead with your helmet, that is not to mention that it was out of bounds, but if you lead with your helmet, you're going to get called for that every time. No question, an excellent call right there. Helmet to helmet. Huge call. Third and 15. That'll give the Bucks an automatic first down. That's the toughness there of Troy Smith. All his teammates always talk about his leadership, the intangibles, and the toughness of trying to get up from a hit like that. Tron Crable from Maslin, Ohio. Has he can complain all he wants. Yeah. There was helmet contact on the near side. And if you're Michigan defense, let it go. Play to hold him to a field goal right now. First down and ten. Got the slant. Got a first down. Robisky. No, wait a minute. They're going to spot it maybe adjust a little bit short. Let's see. Troy had to slide the line to the left. A blitz coming from the left. It's picked up, and it's a one-on-one -on -one matchup with Robisky against Morgan Trent. Makes a good move, and the ball is thrown on the money. And Morgan Trent, who is Michigan's fastest DB, again playing off man-to-man. -man. Ron English playing a lot of man-to-man -man coverage here late in this football game. So second down and short. And Smith keeps it himself. 
There's your first down signal for the Buckeyes here. Clock down to six minutes. Of course, near the end of the game, we'll select a Chevrolet player of the game from each team and to honor their determination, Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. I can certainly remember Troy Smith winning it in Ann Arbor a year ago with that wonderful performance. Here he's up by four, 5.55 to go. See how Trussell sets it up. If he's content for a field goal, if he'll attack, if he'll open it up, if he work on the clock, he's going to fire for it. End zone. Got it. Touchdown. Goes back to Robisky. Brian Robisky as Jim Trussell fires away. Well, that started with great protection from the offensive line and the confidence you have in your quarterback if you're Jim Trestle Troy Smith throwing the football. This is going to check the feet over there on the far side on this reception just to make sure that Robisky has one in bounds and control. It's a designed fade stop by Ohio State to come back and Morgan Trent slips. Let's see if he has the foot in bounds on possession here. It's too high there. Boy, he's in. It looked Great like a call. It looked like it. It did. Didn't it looked it? like there might have yeah. been two blades there. <laughs> I'm, Look at that. Know, That's even... great technique right there. And I tell you what, to make that call and to be focused as that official right there and have his was, eyes down, that was a great yeah. job now. Per perfect position. Great mechanics. And you go back to the Sean Crable late hit on third and 15 to keep the drive alive. No question about it. That helmet to helmet there on the near side. Yeah, that is great mechanics right there. Big time call by the side judge to and stay that's focused. John Lusevansky. I'm not sure I pronounced his name right, but that's the side judge on this fine crew assigned by Dave Perry to this game. 41 31 extra point time. That is the fourth different Buckeye with a touchdown reception in this game. 11 plays, 83 yards, and more importantly, five minutes off the clock. Petrie tacks on the extra point. The Buckeyes are five and a half minutes away from playing for a national championship. Preston yanks it down. He's going to come out. He's short of the 20-yard line. He made. He's so good. Even Michigan ordered sandwiches. They got 160 of these specials waiting for you in the bus afterwards. And 2:30 go to Ohio State. They're the home team. Tripped up his Manningham that time. Smith's on him. And that is the first catch. For Manningham since the opening drive when he had three in that opening drive. Second and five. Got the first down. Remember the clock will stop as Arrington picks up the first down momentarily but Michigan needs to keep hurrying. And that's a great point Brent in college football as a quarterback when you're in this kind of offense it's all about getting first downs and getting out of bounds giving salvaging as much time as you can. Chad Henney is in a comfort zone here having done this many times. Comes back underneath the heart. How much doing on that play? I think one key point here for Ohio State's defense. I don't think Ohio State's forced a turnover today. 
but they have 21 interceptions on the year, which is number one in the NCAA. So they're throwing into a secondary right now that picks some balls off. Security moving in. Jimmy Haycock keeps fresh defensive linemen on the field. There is Manningham, and that's a first down at midfield, and that is a big play. Laurinaitis back defending for the Buckeyes, and that's 17 yards. Well, again, going back to Mario Manningham. 7 o'clock Eastern Time. We're just an hour away from USC and California. If the Bears can go in and upset the Trojans, they'll go to the Rose Bowl. And with Bob Davey and Kirk Herbstreit, I'm Brent Musburger. We're wrapping up another classic between Michigan and Ohio State. Slipping at the 44-yard line. That's Arrington. Malcolm Jenkins there. Something to keep in mind as you're watching the clock is Lloyd Carr has expended two of his timeouts. We're under four minutes to go. They're down 11. Every second counts and is precious. And they only have one timeout remaining. And he can throw this one. Beautiful throw. And hanging on is Arrington. He took a lick from number 33, Laurinaitis, and held on. And look at him bounce right back up. I've been really, really impressed with Adrian Arrington. Now this one's going to come back. But since the injury to Manningham, as you indicated earlier, Roy Carr is fired up. We're going to get a hold on Reuben Riley on Vernon Golston right now. But that was a great hit by Laurinaitis. Holding. 72 offense. 10 yards. Previous spot. Still second down. The thing that's so impressive about James Laurinaitis, how deep he got on that drop. But let's go back and look right here. Reuben Rowdy, the big offensive tackle. I think Vernon Golston at the top, number 50, has played an excellent football game. And there's the hole yep. right there. Second down and 14. Henny. Deflected incomplete. Now off the receiver's hands. Third down coming up 14 yards for the Wolverines defensive coordinators when they get into this situation and Bob you know all about this is you dropping back into coverage trying to keep everything in front of you so you can come up and make the play without uh, Michigan picking up a first down Jimmy yeah. Haycock the defensive coordinator and Bob Davey he's done a superb job I remember when this year started could Ohio State's offense score enough points to help this young defense. Their they defense has been outstanding all season long. Lost nine starters from the defense a year ago that won the Fiesta Bowl. Lost a great trio of linebackers led by A.J. Hawk. Now third and 14 against Haycock's defense. Henny will not get it off. He is sacked. Jay Richardson, number 99, the senior from Dublin, Ohio, is in on the quarterback. That is the fourth sack of the game for the Buckeyes and his second when you pressure with four it allows you to drop seven and play zone and when you can get pressure with four that is gold for a defensive coordinator the play before we saw Riley hold Richardson this time Richardson gets around Riley and through Mitchell to get that pressure and Jay Richardson's had a great senior year that's his fourth sack on the season right now the fellows from USC, Florida, Notre Dame, Arkansas, Rutgers, they're just happy to have that extra touchdown tacked on by the Bucks. We've come a long way, Brent, haven't we? When the loser of the Ohio State Michigan game possibly ends up in Pasadena. Well, what about if we had a playoff start in two weeks from now? You couldn't blame these coaches for resting their starters in this game. So everybody who wants that playoff, think twice about it. Here you come now, fourth and 16 at 255. Time goes deep down the far side. Incomplete. Manningham interference. Michigan retains possession. Jamaria O'Neill, the safety. Michigan still alive. Best interference defense number three. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. If you're sitting at home and you're saying that wasn't pass interference, I don't want to hear about it. Because if you're a defensive back, 
One of the things you never do is turn your back completely to the ball and have no idea where the ball is. Whether or not he touched him or not is irrelevant. An official will call that every time when you don't know where the football is. An amazing thing about Mario Manningham, you know the double move is coming. You just can't stop it. But great thing about college football, 15 yard penalty and not the spot of the interference. Great thing for the defensive team. You got that right. He's talking like a defensive coach. Only looking one perspective. <laughs> of course. <laughs> First down and ten, and here's Henny. Firing high and snapped down by Manningham. He's out of bounds on the far side. Stops the clock at the 36-yard line. And guys, I am really impressed with Chad Henny. His strength, arm strength, composure. He has played an excellent football game tonight. 19 to 32 for 232 yards. More importantly, the numbers: two minutes, 40 seconds, and then, of course, we're inside of an hour, and it'll be the showdown in the Coliseum. USC and California are still ahead of us. Second and four. Firing, diving, rolling catch for a first down. What a brilliant play that was as Mike Massey slips out the tight end. Watch 83 here. Again, Three. two deep coverage, and you see Mike Massey in that scene. Mike Massey, I believe, had a brother play here at Ohio State. And at as Michigan. Well. And at Michigan. So he is has an interesting background, but a great catch from a young man from the state of Ohio. First and ten. Henny high and incomplete, and it'll be second down and ten. Carr's got to get the ball thrown obviously downfield now that they're out of timeouts things like a sack things like coming up short with the ball staying in bounds short of the first down that would be obviously problem there for Chad Henney and this Wolverine effort to get the ball into the end zone. Second and ten men in him on the sideline. Away from the pressure, still has to throw and does. Complete touchdown, Michigan. Bounce right back and it hit Tyler Ecker. So, two fellas who have not caught a ball all day, Massey and Ecker, catch them here. And now Michigan closes back into within five. Outstanding job. Bob, you and I have talked about Chad Henney, the composure. We just talked about how he's been in this kind of situation. He's comfortable in this kind of situation, leading his team down. And a great job of showing composure on that last throw, stepping up through the teeth of the defense and finding the tight end. So the question becomes, can they close it to within three? And then will Lloyd Carr go to an onside kick? One timeout left. 2.16 up on the clock. First things first, two point conversion time. Throws for it, and he's got it. It's a three point game on Breston's two point conversion. 42 39. The classic continues in Columbus, Ohio. Number one and number two. We're back in Columbus. Let's go back to the touchdown guys. Well it was patience. That's the most important thing when you have a tight end coming underneath. I think it was his last option there is you have to have to have enough time. He steps up and I think it looked like Marcus Freeman lost lost the uh, the tight end there in coverage out to the flat. What a great job by Chad Henney of throwing on the run not scrambling but scrambling to throw. Now it becomes critical Garrett Revis and uh, Kirk as you and Bob both pointed out out of timeouts they've got to go for the onside kick they line up now. They show that they're going to kick it to the kickers left here it is onside kick battle for the scrum and Ted Ginn right there wraps it up for the Buckeyes remember now Michigan out of timeouts 213 to go here for Troy Smith. Take a look at the hands here for number seven. Well, Jim Tressel would tell you that Ted Ginn has the best set of hands on the football team. Fortunate for Ohio State, it went directly to Ted Ginn, and unfortunate 
for the Michigan special teams. And now if you're Ohio State, stay out of the shotgun, get the quarterback under center, and just protect the football. They've had two misconnections on snaps, one high back in the gun, and the other a complete misfire. Here's what they turnovers. Now they come back with the powerful back. Antonio Pittman, nine yards on first down. That's what's coming up next at 8 Eastern, California and USC. Again, if the Bears win it, off to Pasadena they march. And who knows how this is all going to shake out with the BCS. We have an injured player down for the uh, for the Wolverines. USC wins tonight against Cal and they went out. They should be in that championship game. Now on every snap of course uh, Lloyd Carr's defense will try to strip the ball as he keeps an eye on that clock. One thing I'll add this becomes very relevant. If USC wins tonight and Notre Dame upsets USC and you're a voter and you're looking at this Michigan team that just battled against Notre Dame. Didn't Michigan play Notre Dame earlier this year. It was very valid. And I think they went to South Bend and put on a clinic. Milking the clock. Snaps it on two. Game over. Ohio State will play for a national championship. The Buckeyes beat their arch rival again.